everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. <clears throat> uh, Wednesday evening, leaving the office, uh, headed home. Uh, did a little cardio. Gym is actually closed for the second day. Uh, city's working on a water line repair, and so um, headed straight home. I didn't get a, get a chance to get that this morning because it was closed. Uh, but anyway, I hope everybody has had a good start to that week. We just hit the midway point moving into uh, the home stretch tomorrow. Hopefully everything is going on schedule. If not, that's okay. Keep pushing. That's part of the, that's part of the equation. That's part of life. That's part of the game. It's not always going to flow the way you want it to. But stay strong. Keep your focus. Keep looking forward. Never, ever quit. It's about resilience. It's about being relentless. It's about fortitude. Uh, as much as it is about brilliance, as much as it is about planning, as much as it is about resourcing and marketing and all of the other things, uh, depending on what it is you're going after, it's about simply staying in the game and finishing, going the distance. All right, on that note, I'm out. Uh, on to the next thing. Look, uh, I don't plan on taking too long because I want to be done with this long before I get home because I may want to stop and do something. But um, don't forget to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. As you know, uh, the information to support what we do is in the description box. Those of you who have followed for a long time, you know what we do. Those who may be new, click the link and go check it out. Um, but definitely show some love, show some support with what we're doing. Um, we're going to become a lot more uh, pro progressive and uh, connected in this fundraiser over the next couple of weeks. But I just uh, am keeping the word with my people that I'm going to continue to mention it. Uh, so that's that. Now, uh, I live in Houston. And a lot pops off in Houston, good and bad. Uh, we've got our share of horror stories and our share of triumphant uh, narratives. Uh, we are now dealing with another horror story. Uh, and with me, it doesn't get any horrible than the abuse, neglect, and harm and killing of children. Uh, by now, you've probably seen on the news where uh, two adults, the mother of a child and her boyfriend, left four kids uh, in a home without supervision for over a year. One of the kids was deceased and his decaying body stayed in the house with those kids. They were never checked into school after May 20th. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, what neighbors are saying is that they saw one of the younger kids every now and then they would come out and ask for food. Uh, but the oldest kid was 15. Uh, that was in the house. There was an older daughter who was 17, who wasn't in the house. Haven't been able to get any bearing on what's going on with her. Uh, but the initial discovery happened a couple of days ago when the 15 year old called and reported that they were there and they needed help and they showed up and found this horrific scene uh, the skeletal remains of an 8 year old kid uh, a 9 year old a 7 year old and a 15 year old in the house those kids have since been taken into custody by CPS uh, the parents were initially well, the mother and the boyfriend were initially brought in and questioned and released, and no one could understood, understand how they were released with there being a body. But they were initially released pending the autopsy. The autopsy proved that the child died from multiple blunt force trauma uh, and declared it a homicide. At that point, uh, arrest warrants were issued for both individuals. The mother has been charged with 
injury to a child by omission and the boyfriend these and so that we're clear on this this is a black mother with black children now the boyfriend happens to be white uh, but this is a story this is a story that goes beyond what's found and I've been digging because I needed to know what's going on and I'm still digging but I, I want to talk about this because it's relevant to where we're at as a people if you were to look at this place where these kids were you would never think okay rough neighborhood rough place seemed very clean very manicured um, apartment complex uh, the tenants that I did see that live there seemed to be working class people uh, it wasn't anywhere close to what you would consider projects or uh, somewhere planted in the hood so what amazes me is there was this scent and there was a woman uh, several people said that there was a scent coming from the apartment that some of them said they even reported it but nothing was ever done about it um, anybody who's ever smelt a decaying human body knows the distinct smell and just how horrible that smell is um, the idea that people lived with that until it subsided uh, is nothing short of ridiculous I don't want to use the word amazing because I'm not amazed by it I'm actually appalled uh, at that time it wasn't anything they were going to do to save that child that child was already dead but you're looking at a year and bodies start to decay within a day or so the decaying process starts by three or four days you start to smell it and so anywhere within that first three or four weeks those kids could have been out of that condition but nobody there's no follow through uh, today the grandmother of one of the of one of the kids uh, I think the youngest kid uh, came forth and said if she would have known what was going on she would have took all of them um, her son is the father of the youngest the seven year old her son is in and out of jail and never really been a part of the child's life and from her uh, telling of the story there's been one guy after another matter of fact that was a point in time some six five six years ago that uh, maybe somewhere up in there that she that this mother of these kids came to live with her and this is not her daughter this is her son's ex-girlfriend and mother of her son's child all right but she lets her come stay there but what she found out is when she would leave to go to work and this is a 71 year old woman when she would leave to go to work this woman was bringing different men over. She said she could never know what was going on with these men, but she didn't feel that was appropriate. So she asked her to leave. Now she's got a guilt complex because she asked her to leave and this happened to the kid. Uh, and a friend of, I, of mine and I were discussing the importance of tribe, the importance of village, the importance of community, and the importance of understanding. There was a lot going on here. Uh, how do you abandon your children to live by themselves in an apartment? You know, I'm assuming even though it doesn't look like housing, I'm assuming it had to be housing because obviously they weren't evicted. So the rent was being paid. Uh, but how do you abandon them to fend for themselves? Uh, only one teenager. And at the time you abandoned them, that teenager was 14. The others were... Uh, what, eight, you know, well, eight, seven, and six, the, and the seven year old, uh, well, the eight year old is the one that, uh, well, I'm pretty sure he was probably seven when he died. So, uh, the deceased kid, uh, was seven years old, and you left these kids to fend for themselves. Um, obviously, to me, there's something wrong there. That That's beyond darkness to me that's beyond evil evil sometimes you're looking for explanations especially when you're in the field that i'm in you know what
what the mind can do when it's not right. Um, and there are some things that says that's something not right. Uh, haven't gotten close, haven't been able to see them actually, uh, the, the two people responsible. I haven't been able to see anything but pictures and a couple of, um, you know, still shots of them being in different places after the arrest. But something's not right. Um, but to what extent, obviously, I don't know. Uh, just speculating based off of what I see and something not being right. Um, but the grandmother said that, you know, was something, you know, that they disappeared for like five years and then out of the blue she called and asked her did she want to see her grandson she went to see him and she said that that was a feeling in her at the time that it, she would have asked to adopt that baby that his mother would have allowed it and so she's feeling guilty about that too and that's a lot of people taking shots at grandma you know grandma's 71 years old and you caught in this real crazy space of having lived your life, having gone hard in the paint to do what you can for yours, and you're trying to get to that point now to where you can relax, and now you're looking at all of this in front of you, and you've got to make a decision. Do I want to spend my twilight years raising kids and dealing with all this? And so, you can say what you want to say, but as a parent who has grandchildren now that are in their teens, and you know the thought of having to turn around and rear them while still trying to close the deal on the younger kids that we have it's daunting it's daunting with resources there's two of us in the house uh so we have we have we have you know double the time of what a lot of people have tr trying to do this because it was just grandma and so i'm not casting judgment on her you know you know, I'm wondering, you know, what are you thinking when you don't hear from them for five years? But then people fall out. That's the part I'm talking about with the village. Because it's not uncommon to fall out with someone and not talk to them for years. It's not uncommon to sit up and not see, you know, and, and you know, some of us know what it's like to have your kids get mad at you. And then that means you don't get to see grandbabies. So, you know, you know the game's being played. You know how it gets. They're, the kids are used as leverage. Kids are used as leverage with grandparents. Kids are used as leverage with their non-custodial parent. Kids are everything except kids being covered. And that's the problem. Look at what's going on in our communities. This is what, I mean, we just had little Malika uh, a couple of years ago that the whole world fell in love with. And it turns out that it looks like either her mom or her stepfather killed her. The people that are entrusted with the safety of the kid. It's bad enough when there's an external evil that comes into your paradise and shakes it up. It's bad enough when you get a phone call and they say, we found your daughter, but she's deceased. Or we found your son, but he's deceased. We found your son and it looks like he was a victim of violence and so we we you know we, we it's bad enough when it's that when when somebody robs you of something that precious it's bad but it's absolutely horrible when the ones that are supposed to be protecting the kids are the ones that are the greatest threat now what is also interesting is that CPS says that this family has a history with them. At the time that all this transpired, there were no open cases, obviously, because a simple uh, home visit would have uncovered everything and we wouldn't be here. But whatever happened in the situation with CPS, CPS was somehow satisfied that the kids were safe. Another entire family of kids fall through the crack. One ends up dead. The other three will be dealing with 
the long grueling process of trying to heal and that's if they get in front of people who are capable of facilitating healing from a traumatic experience of that magnitude and not everybody's equipped for that psychotherapy is probably not going to work uh, it's going to take a number of different uh, modems and mechanisms and, 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 and probably hybrid therapies um, to be able to really help these kids get anywhere close to the semblance of a normal life. Not to mention that uh, the research done by uh, Kaiser reveals that these adverse childhood experiences, which these are, have long reaching effects even after you've been treated and you've dealt with it, that it still can have lasting effects. So we're talking about health implications. We're talking about a number of other different outcomes, a, a heightened risk of suicidal ideation and suicidal attempt, a heightened risk of heart disease, a heightened risk of diabetes, a heightened risk of cancer, and a bunch of other things that simply come out of an adverse childhood experience, which they've had plenty of. And then you've got trying to live a normal life, trying to be mentally balanced, trying to find your center in yourself after a situation like that, trying to develop the capacity to simply trust. All of these things were taken from these kids. Their innocence was robbed from them, ripped from them, taken away from them. They were left in a position in a situation that they should never have been left in. And it's not an anomaly. That's the part that bothers me, is that I get way too many issues and cases like this that find their way onto my desk. I get so many people coming to me saying, we would just love for you to work with our kids and to see what these kids have been through, or to have people come to me who had horrible childhoods and had nobody to look out for them, and now we're trying to put the pieces of their life back together so that they can live somewhere close to a normal life. That's way too prevalent way too prevalent i'm telling you if you look at the research that out there i can tell you from uh, a literature review that i've conducted on a, a, a wealth of empirical data along with just constant observation and the polling of my own work and my clients i have way too many clients that have suffered trauma as children far too many when it comes to my black clients it's almost a given And that is unacceptable. I'm glad that they're seeking help. I'm glad that they're looking to do something more in their life. I'm glad that they're aspiring to reach beyond where they're at. I'm glad that that's happening. What bothers me is the fact that they've got to do it under such dire circumstances. The fact that they're even having to overcome something, heal from something of that magnitude. That shouldn't be the case. How are we ever going to be in a situation where we're truly talking about liberation and power? How are we going to ever be at a point where we're talking about liberated and empowered and critical thinking and lateral thinking minds when we are crushing the minds and, and, and the psyches of our children long before they ever have a time to determine and discover who they are? That's a horrible thing. And we've got to start actually caring, not as just grandparents, not as just uh, 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 aunties and uncles. We've got to start caring as simply saying that can't be OK in my community. That can't be OK at my church. That can't be OK. Me hearing this from a co-worker. That can't be OK. We've got to start being willing to get our hands dirty. We got to be willing to step in and tick some people off. We got to be willing to step in and say, I know you're not going to care for me anymore. You're going to be upset with me. But what I'm seeing, I don't like, and I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to do something about it. Yeah, you're going to piss some people off. Yeah, you're going to make some people upset. But at the end of the day, it is going to be better for the children. We have to have a real serious conversation with ourselves as it pertains to how important our children really are to. We can talk about the children being the future. We can talk about all these things we want to say about kids and how special our children are and all that. What you really determine, where you really determine how special someone is to someone or something is to someone is how well they take care of it, how well they protect it, how well they guard it, how well they look after it, what they're willing to do to make sure it's okay. That's how you determine 
whether someone really values something. And what I'm seeing is we don't, we're not behaving as if we really value our youth. It's far too many of them in dire situations for that to be a reality. I'm challenging everybody who hears this to share it. I'm challenging you to step up. I'm challenging you to become a part of the solution. It has to be something done now. This is absolutely ridiculous. A year living inside of an apartment with your dead brother's body decaying for a year. That can't be. Look, on that note, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Uh, I was on a little longer than I wanted to be, but I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Look, it's time to do something. And as I stated in the beginning, uh, for those of you who believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, go to the description box and either click the link and go to the site or follow the uh, link to the processor or give through the organization's cap app, cash app account. But whatever you do, show some love. We've got work to do. On that note, I'm out of here.